There once was a time when nations experienced unprecedented prosperity and gave rise to a new era of disposable income. A time when opulent department stores and exclusive boutiques came on the scene, and the shopping landscape was forever transformed. Welcome to Schmancy, the place where we talk all things rich, exclusive, and fancy Schmancy. Today, we are taking you back to the Gilded Age, a period in history marked by extravagant spending, when shopping transcended mere necessity and became a symbol of status. The mid to late 1800s saw the rise of a new type of retail shop, one which existed only to fulfill the desires of a growing upper class, and one who happily parted them from their money. These were the palaces of consumption, boasting fabulous architecture and glamorous interiors, while making a grand spectacle of everything. Those who turned the act of shopping into a cultural experience. If you're unapologetically bougie, or just plain curious about where high society shopped during the Gilded Age, then you've stopped at the right video. Without further ado, here are the 9 most luxurious shops of the Gilded Age. Number 1. Bloomingdale's. Let's get started in Gilded Age New York, with one of the best-known department stores in the United States. Founded in 1861 by brothers Joseph and Lyman Bloomingdale, it was at the time, a small hoop skirt boutique on Manhattan's Lower East Side. It wasn't until 1872, when they opened a second location in Midtown. This same Midtown location outgrew its size, thereby moving into an even larger building at 59th Street and 3rd Avenue, where its flagship store still stands today. Bloomingdale's quickly expanded to offer a wide range of fashion and luxury goods, and by the 1880s, it had established itself as a destination for New York's most affluent shoppers. Over the years, the store introduced many more departments, and eventually became a famous fashion hub among local and international shoppers. Today, Bloomingdale's takes up the entire block between 3rd Avenue and Lexington, and 59th and 60th Streets. It recently celebrated its 150th anniversary, and currently has locations across the United States, in Dubai, and Kuwait. Number 2. Marshall Fields. Founded in 1852 by Potter Palmer, it was Marshall Field and Harry Selfridge who took over the business, and turned it into a retail powerhouse by the 1890s. This iconic department store was known for introducing Chicago to a brand new type of shopping experience which included fixed prices, a focus on luxury goods, elegant windows and displays, a magical in-store tea room, and generous policies, such as, give the lady what she wants, or, the customer is always right. The flagship Marshall Fields building on State Street featured a great hall, a mosaic vaulted ceiling designed by Louis Comfort Tiffany, a pair of outdoor street corner clocks, and was built in stages over the course of more than two decades. It eventually became known as the world's second largest store, and throughout the Gilded Age, it was a popular shopping destination and social scene for the likes of Chicago's Upper Crust and the Nouveau Riche. For those of you who've never heard of Marshall Fields, that's because it is no more. The brand disappeared in 2005 when it was sold to federated department stores. Though you can still experience the popular landmark store on State Street, its glamour days are over, as the building is now occupied by Macy's. Number 3. Henri Bendel. This historic fashion emporium known for its brown and white striped packaging, got its start in 1895 by milliner and designer Henri Bendel. He opened his first shop in New York's Greenwich Village, offering expensive women's hats and accessories in stylish designs. The high-end boutique quickly became a mark of high status, catering to the most elite ladies of New York City. It wasn't until 1913 that the shop had moved to its opulent 57th Street location. As business flourished, Bendel expanded its offerings to include the latest in Paris couture, cosmetics, jewelry, fragrances, and home accessories. Despite various ownership changes and multiple moves, Henri Bendel was a beloved fixture in the New York shopping scene for well over a century. The store closed its doors in 2019, marking the end of an era in New York retail and fashion that can never be recaptured. Number 4. Harrods. Nestled in the heart of London's well-to-do Knightsbridge district, this most posh department store quickly became a symbol of opulence during England's late Victorian and Edwardian period. Its story began in 1834 when Charles Henry Harrod established a humble grocery shop on Brompton Road. Under the astute vision of subsequent generations, the store quickly gained popularity for its exceptional quality and service, attracting a discerning clientele. After several setbacks, including being burned to the ground in 1883, Harrods was rebuilt into a palatial department store that took up the entire block, and showcased an astonishing array of merchandise, such as medicines, perfumes, ready-made clothing, stationery, food, and even exotic pets. 
By the late 19th century, the name had become synonymous with luxury and elegance, catering to the world's elite and royal families alike. In 1898, the store introduced one of the world's first escalators, and its captivating Egyptian hall drew visitors from all corners of the world. With over a million square feet, is it any wonder that Harrods became known as the largest and most famous department store in the world? Today, the store stands as a testament to its illustrious past, and continues to reign as a symbol of grandeur and class. Number 5. Harvey Nichols. We have another ultra-posh Knightsbridge store for you. This one founded by Benjamin Harvey. It all began in 1831, as a small textile shop in a terraced house, catering to the city's fashionable elite. It wasn't until 1848, when employee James Nichols married Harvey's niece, that the Nichols half of the business came into play. Throughout the Victorian era, the business gradually expanded into its neighboring properties. But all was demolished in 1889, to create a large department store occupying the entire width of the block between Seville and Sloan streets. The same store that you see today. With its very privileged clientele, this brand new store was quite capable of competing with Harrods, only a few blocks away. Prior to the days of ready-made clothing, the typical Harvey Nichols customer would shop for lavish silks and lace, ribbons, hosiery, and the fanciest of haberdashery. But by the 1890s, it was a haven for expertly edited fashion collections and premium food and wine. Today Harvey Nichols still stands in its original spot, and has several other locations worldwide. Number 6. House of Worth. Ever wondered where the wealthiest women of the 19th century got their most avant-garde fashions? Well, other than having your own personal dressmaker, only a fashion house could provide such rarities. And throughout the Gilded Age, this most popular Paris fashion house was synonymous with wealth and sophistication. Founded in 1858 by British-born designer Charles Frederick Worth, this illustrious fashion house was one of the first to introduce the world to the concept of haute couture and designer labels. From dramatic fabrics, to the intricate beading adorning delicate gowns, to lavish trimming, and meticulously tailored reception dresses that exude power and grace, every creation from the House of Worth was a masterpiece. It's no surprise that the American upper crust of that time, as well as European royalty and aristocrats, all traveled to Paris to purchase entire wardrobes from the House of Worth. When it came to getting that unforgettable gown for a wedding, for afternoon tea, or a masquerade ball, House of Worth was the number one go-to for the likes of Empress Eugenie of France and Alice Vanderbilt. Sadly by the 20th century, this powerful fashion house began to lose its novelty, as other haute couture fashion houses were cropping up all over the place. And by 1956, it was no more. Number 7. City of Paris. Speaking of Paris, instead of Americans going to Paris to get the latest fashion trends, why not bring Paris to America? Well that's exactly what Felix and Emile Verdier did in 1850, when they arrived by ship in San Francisco Harbor, loaded with French silks, laces, fine wines, champagne, and cognac. The citizens of San Francisco quickly surrounded the ship with rowboats and purchased everything without ever being unloaded from the ship. The brothers quickly returned to France, reloaded the ship, and headed back to San Francisco, where they opened a small waterfront store and named it City of Paris. Years later, the Gilded Age ladies of San Francisco would become quite fashionable, thanks to this remarkable shop which gave them easy access to Paris culture and fashions, without ever having to step foot there. By 1896, City of Paris would move into a new location across from Union Square, and its amazing stained glass rotunda would come after the 1906 earthquake. Sadly in 1972, City of Paris had closed its doors. Though the building was demolished to make way for a more streamlined Neiman Marcus, they were sure to preserve the old rotunda inside a modern glass wall. And it is now a popular tourist attraction. Number 8. A.T. Stewart & Company. Alexander Turney Stewart is known as the father of all department stores. The Irish-born merchant established his first store in 1823, on Lower Manhattan's Chambers Street. His store was so successful, that in 1846, he constructed this much larger all-marble building, to house his fancy imported wares. It wasn't until 1862, that Stuart moved into his largest department store, referred to as the Iron Palace. The six-story building with its cast iron front, glass dome skylight, and grand emporium, occupied the entire block at Broadway and 10th Streets. Its 30 departments included expensive linens, European clothing, toys, carpets, upholstery, and so much more. Attracting a most affluent New York clientele. It is noted that Stuart's needed no identifying sign on its facade. 
Quite simply, it was a well-known New York landmark, and if you were an upper-class lady, you knew just where to go. Stewart's store was also the first to start a mail-order business. And instead of haggling over prices with each customer, they were the first store to offer fixed prices, making shopping more transparent and convenient. By 1896, the business was sold to another retailer, with the building ultimately burning down in 1956. However, Stewart's Marble Palace still stands today at 280 Broadway, housing various offices and retail outlets. Last we have number 9. Siegel Cooper. This retail giant of the late Gilded Age, got its start in 1887 by Henry Siegel and Frank Cooper, in the city of Chicago. They did so well, that by 1894, they were ambitious enough to open a colossal New York store, housing 15 and a half acres of floor space, and employing nearly 3,000 workers. They called it, the Big Store, as it took up nearly the entire block on 6th Avenue, between 18th and 19th Street. The idea was to outdo, A.T. Stewart, who was failing at the time. As well as all the other competition in New York. It worked, because on opening day in 1896, they had a mob of 40,000 frenzied customers waiting outside. Needless to say, some were trampled, while others fainted, when the store finally opened its doors. New York Siegel Cooper was very much the city's first indoor shopping mall with 124 distinct departments, encompassing not just fashion and homewares, but everything, from a bicycle shop, to a bank, a post office, a dentist, a doctor's office, a beautician, a barber shop, a box office, a grocery store, a photo studio, a telegraph office, a plant shop, a huge restaurant, an art gallery, and well at this point, you get the gist by now. There was even a fountain in the center of the store, where fancy ladies would congregate to see, and to be seen. Siegel Cooper was the one-stop shop retailer who claimed to carry everything under the sun. By 1905, they would even open a third store in Boston. But by 1915, Henry Siegel had overextended himself, declared bankruptcy, and all Siegel Coopers would close shortly afterwards. The Chicago store was taken over by Sears Roebuck. Today it is home to Robert Morris University. The Boston store now houses government offices and small retailers. While the massive New York store became a military hospital during World War I, then a warehouse, and today houses multiple low-end retail outlets. And for sticking around this long, we'll throw in a bonus, called, Ladies Mile. Not exactly a store, but more of a popular neighborhood, throughout the Gilded Age. The history of Ladies Mile is a tale of fashion, commerce, and social transformation. Situated in the heart of downtown Manhattan, this bustling commercial district emerged as a prominent destination for upscale shopping and socializing. It stretched along Broadway and 6th Avenue, from roughly 10th to 24th Street, encompassing a shopper's paradise of grand department stores, lavish boutiques, piano showrooms, fashionable hotels, performance halls, upscale restaurants, and more. Quite simply, a neighborhood fit for royalty. What most don't realize, is that up until the late 1800s, it was frowned upon for a lady of means to walk the streets of New York, unaccompanied by a man. For the first time, Ladies Mile, offered the wealthy woman an environment where she felt safe to wander around by herself, or with her lady friends. It all began in 1862, when A.T. Stewart moved his department store from Lower Manhattan to 10th Street and Broadway. Other glitzy stores soon followed after that, eventually taking up a generous portion of the district. To list just a few of them, there was Lord & Taylor, Tiffany's, Arnold Constable, Bergdorf Goodman, B. Altman, and of course, the mammoth-sized Siegel Cooper, amongst many others. The grandeur of the buildings, with ornate facades, and towering display windows, truly matched the expensive tastes of the women who walked the streets of those times. Sadly, all was changed by the Great Depression, and by the mid-20th century, the area's popularity had died down quite a bit, giving rise to other newer shopping districts. Today, much of the beautiful architecture still remain, but its ritzy glitzy reputation has pretty much moved out, to be replaced by more affordable venues such as Burlington Coat Factory, Old Navy, and TJ Maxx. And that's it for the 9 most luxurious shops of the Gilded Age. So which of these venues did you like the most? For those of you who have once graced the halls of these fabulous establishments, feel free to share your experiences with us in the comments below. One last thing, if you got any value out of this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon so you never miss out on another video. With that said, we'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see each other next time.